that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord of the just says the Lord, the God of Israel. Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in serenity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And who did these great signs in our sight? He protected us along the way we went 
and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove us out before us, all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive you your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Sechem. The, Lord, the word of our Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 78. We will read them responsibly by full verse. Hear my teaching, O my people, and climb your ears to the words of my mouth. My mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from our children. To generations to come, the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might tell it to their children, so that we might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will, no, <clears throat> will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with those to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish then said to the wise, 
give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You would better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
be waiting. There is no difference in the status of the bridesmaids. They all came with torches and they all fell asleep as time went by. But half of them had made provision for this possible lengthy delay after the negotiations of the bridegroom. But the other half had not made such preparations. It was their total responsibility to be ready at any moment. And their vigilance was determined by their preparedness, not by their ability to stay awake. For the foolish ones who had fallen asleep and run out of oil for their lamps, this story is a sobering one. They are barred from going into the feast. They have let themselves be lulled into thinking, well, there's no hurry. The lamp oil can always be got later, or someone else, maybe the other bridesmaids, will take up the slack. For the wise bridesmaids, this is a parable of great jubilation. How does this apply to us? Well, I guess none of us is completely foolish or completely wise. Each of us has some aspect of the, the foolish bridesmaids within us. You know how it is in life. Oh, you know, I've, I've been meaning to do that for a long time. One of these days, I'm going to change my lifestyle. <laughs> or, you know, I've always been meaning to go and visit them. I'll get round to it one time. Oh, here they are. I really should apologise to them. Fill in the blanks. The foolish bridesmaids were left behind, not by accident, but through their own negligence. And every Christian, of course, also has some aspects of the wise bridesmaids within. All the myriad ways in which wise disciples have been illuminating the world, lighting one small candle at a time by the way they hear and live out the words of Jesus Christ. So in this parable, Jesus is directing the thoughts of his hearers to the kingdom of God and fixing their eyes on the end of time. I would suggest that the parable urges the same things upon us. We cannot live as though the end is already upon us, yet we must live as if the end could be imminent. The other evening, when a deer ran out in front of me on the road to my house, it concentrated my mind wonderfully, I can tell you. All too often, though, we fall short of living life fully in the present. What we have from the past is the wisdom we have gleaned from it. We can't be sure about the future because so many circumstances can overturn the plans we had set, just like a deer running across in front of me. All we have is the present. However, we cannot live myopically in the present, we must bring the wisdom of the past to bear on the present, where we live with an eye to the future. And in this, our Christian faith enables us to discern what is important and what is not. Our faith teaches us that we can indeed trust the promises of God, and if we have any acquired wisdom herein, we know we are portioned to be vigilant, knowing that the Lord may well come to us when we least expect him. Such wisdom instructs us to be ready. common 
as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 4 in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide our president and all who serve the land, people of this land, and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, especially Alex, Robert, Grant, Anna Claire, Adam, Jared, Joe, Cervella, Linda, Ellen, Doug, Beth, Jesse, Jason, and Jennifer, June, Bill, Philip, David, Caden, Janet, Bob, Nancy, Steve, Zach, Tony, Crystal, Thomas, Michael, Susan, Logan, Stephen, Jim, Kara, Pam, Wayne, Jim and Christine, Wayne, Anna Anna Marie, Lisa, Hayden Loudon and the Loudon family, the Nicholas family, Mike Cundiff and the Cundiff family, the Fulkerson family, and members of our military on active duty and people around the world displaced by war and natural disasters. Are there others? Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Harry and Frank. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We commend to your mercy all those who have died, especially Cliff, Betsy, Irene, Eric, and Dean, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Michael, and all your saints in your, ever, your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To prepare ourselves to receive this most holy communion, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated? Father Bowles, once again, welcome back to St. Michael's, and thank you very much for stepping into the breach on such short notice due to Father Greg's illness. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here. And uh, for those that were not here earlier, and especially to our uh, visiting guests, uh, please join us in the parish hall downstairs uh, following the service, and uh, we have a uh, uh, plenty of food uh, left over from the, <laughs> the earlier breakfast. And uh, Co would like to uh, oh Yasmin first, and then uh, some words uh, of encouragement from Co. All right. Once again, um, O'Fallon Food Pantry, Faith Lutheran Church, and uh, Benedict Title Insurance are uh, sponsoring a Thanksgiving free Thanksgiving community meal at the Faith Lutheran Church on Thanksgiving Day. We are helping, as usual, every year we help. We're helping this year collecting chicken broth only. I think they have other groceries covered. So if you could, please bring your chicken broths next Sunday here. I will pick them up and deliver them to the Faith Lutheran. Also, they ask if you're not buying chicken broth to make a monetary donation and make, make your checks payable to the O'Fallon Food Pantry. And I believe they're short on chicken broth and turkeys. Thank you. In the announcements for this morning, there is the opening gambit for the angel tree. Every year, we collect gifts uh, for uh, members of the Violence Prevention Center in Belleville. Those gifts are uh, collected between now and December 10th, and then delivered to the Belleville Christian Center for their Christmas party. Now, the way we do it, and have done since COVID, and it works out very well, is that we have an online gift registry. You, next week in the announcements, you will see a link to a list of gifts that they have suggested for the families that we are going to support. The directions for that are in today's announcements. Uh, make sure you look for it, and by next week, the link will be there so you can pick your gifts. You take, buy the gifts, you wrap the gifts, you put the code on the card for the gifts, because we don't know who these children are, so there's a family code. And in the just directions, it tells you what the code means. So you'll know the age, the sex, and the suggested gift. Um, we hope you will uh, join us this year again to purchase all the gifts that uh, they have asked for us to provide for them. Uh, it's always a fun thing to do. When they are collected, they will be collected no later than Sunday, December the 10th. December the 10th. And uh, Roxanne, not Roxanne, uh, Yasmin Koss and Amy Knizny are going to be in charge of collecting that. Collecting that, I'm not going to be in town. Um, so we want to make sure you don't make it hard on them. If you take a tag, if you sign up for a tag, please fill it in, and then you can bring them in every Sunday and put them under the tree that's going to be in the narthex. Thank you very much.
right, one other announcement I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, members of the Bishops Committee, uh, there's a meeting a week from tomorrow on November the 20th at 6 p.m.